And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. Wav hey. The, universe the universe of, of you hey wav hey. Wav hey. hey. Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you, of you hey, wa, wa, hey. working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death, this is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. And it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end time, the Messiah would be revealed. And at that time, he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Hey and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Hey. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Hey. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Hey, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, 
In order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. More specifically, we are discussing the first direct commandment that Yahweh ever gave to man. That first commandment was given to Adam, which was to dress the Garden of Eden. We have been discussing dress and its relationship to the seventh year, a Sabbath for Yahweh, as a year of rest unto the land. Last week, we answered the question, since we can't plant our fields, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit, not even that which grows on its own accord, then what will we have to eat in the seventh year? Since Yahweh commanded us not to do any of these things, we showed you in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 21, that Yahweh will command his blessing upon the land in the sixth year, so much so that the land will produce abundantly and will bring forth enough in that year to last us three long years. We expressed that when we keep a Sabbath of rest unto the land, which is a Sabbath for Yahweh, then he will bless the land in the sixth year to produce enough food as grain and vegetables to feed our families and a surplus of goods such as cotton to operate our businesses. We showed you that Yahweh will not only command his blessing upon the land for the sixth year, but he would also command his blessing upon the land for the seventh and eighth years. We read in Leviticus chapter 25 verse 22 that in the eighth year we are to begin to sow our field again. And while it is growing, we are to eat from the old fruit that is stored until the ninth year. We pointed out that this is the same basic principle that most businesses use today, which is called FIFO, first in, first out. Just as the land is to rest in the seventh year as a Sabbath unto Yahweh, in like manner we are commanded to keep the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh, a day set aside for us to rest and refresh our minds in the knowledge of Yahweh and to give exclusive honor to the memory of Yahweh for all his work, his creation, which he, Yahweh, created and made. We have been discussing for quite some time the first commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam, which was to dress the Garden of Eden. Today, we are going to discuss the second commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam in the Garden of Eden, which was to keep it. Let us open our Bible and read Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord Yahweh took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To keep it. In this scripture, it is a pronoun and is standing in the place of, referring to, or replacing the Garden of Eden. So Yahweh commanded Adam to keep the Garden of Eden. In the beginning of this series, we gave you the facts about what constitutes the Garden of Eden. Let us review these facts. We documented in Webster's Third New International Dictionary, copyright 1966, volume 1, page 936, that Garden of Eden means paradise. In volume 2, page 1636, we verified that paradise is a place or a state 
in which the souls of the righteous after death enjoy eternal bliss. Let us establish here what the word state means. Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, page 1151, defines state as the condition of mind. Based on these facts, we asserted that the Garden of Eden is a place or a condition of the mind in which the souls of the righteous, after they are no longer spiritually dead, enjoy eternal bliss. Paradise was defined as heaven. We verified in Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, page 560, that heaven means a state of thought in which sin is absent and the harmony of divine mind is manifest. Thought takes place in the mind. Heaven is the condition of our mind or our thoughts when absent of sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 tells us that sin is the transgression of the law. Transgression of whose law? Yahweh's law. The laws of the Bible. Therefore, the Garden of Eden is a state of mind where the transgression of the laws of Yahweh is absent and our minds are in harmony with the divine mind of Yahweh. When our minds are in harmony with the divine mind of Yahweh, then our place of abode will be eternally blissful. In actuality, heaven on earth, the Garden of Eden. Consequently, the second commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam was to keep his mind free of transgressing the laws of Yahweh, to keep his thoughts absent of breaking the laws of Yahweh. Once the condition of our minds is absent of transgressing the laws of the Bible, the laws of Almighty God Yahweh, we will be in harmony or agreement with the divine mind of Yahweh, which will constitute heaven on earth. Next week, we shall continue our discussion of the second commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh bin Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. Most people are not aware of the fact that America is in the Bible. She is cryptically called Babylon, Revelation 18.2. In 1986, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, sent the president, vice president, his cabinet, every senator and congressman, the book Yahweh Judges America, which warned them of the inevitable destruction of America. This book explains all that the prophets said would come upon America in the Day of Judgment. You can now read what Yahweh Ben Yahweh
told the government over 10 years ago. To get a copy of Yahweh Judges America, call the number on your screen today. Shalom. Welcome to Exodus. Release our God to us. It was prophesied that when the Son of Man appears, there will be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and disease, a time of great and terrible natural disasters. This is Judgment Day, and yud heh wav -He is plaguing and judging this world. His plagues are greater in America because a few high-ranking individuals in this country have judicially murdered yud heh wav -He, Beit Nun Sofit yud heh wav -He, put him in prison, continue to persecute him, and refuse to let him go. Plagues are demonstrations of the mighty works of yud heh wav -He. he uses them to bring down and humble any nation that ignores his divine laws and order. Extreme weather events have increased dramatically in this country. yud heh wav -He is turning what we once knew as traditional weather patterns upside down. These adverse weather conditions have disrupted the entire agricultural production of America. Once upon a time, this country was known for its ability to produce a surplus of qualitative goods and services. However, serious food shortages are emerging in America, and each day the reality looms that the United States is hard-pressed to supply food for its own people. What is wrong with this picture? Is a nation so great as America facing famine? The most unthinkable of all thoughts for most Americans is that food shortages or widespread hunger could occur in America. We assume that we will always have an abundant, never-ending supply of food. Famine in America? It is a frightening possibility. Famine occurs when there is evidence of a severe shortage of food. It happened in the past. Let us read Genesis chapter 47, verse 13. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. yud heh wav -He alone possesses the power to call for famine. It is under his divine control. Yudhe Wafe calls for a famine as judgment, as a warning, as a correction, or as a punishment. Can we avert famine in America? Yes, we can. And Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhe Wafe, holds the key. However, until Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhe Wafe, is set free, the present course of natural disasters worldwide shall continue to get worse and worse and worse. Shalom, and we'll see you next week on Exodus. Release our God to us. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, 
and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Revelations chapter 21, verse 6. Yahweh promised us a ruler from Judah. However, the enemy has smitten the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Yahweh ben Yahweh has come forth out of Judah to be the ruler in Israel. His goings forth has been from of old, from everlasting. Micah chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. In view of this obvious reference to the Messiah in verse 2, it is appropriate that we recognize the smitten judge of Israel as the Messiah. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 6, it was prophesied that a governor, head, chief, would come out of Judah to rule the people of Yahweh, Israel. This prophecy is important because it reveals that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is from everlasting. The eternal being the Son of Yahweh. We, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, are being raised to understand this aspect of the prophecy. Did you never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner? This is the doing of Yahweh, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Matthew chapter 21, verse 42. The lost sheep of the house of Israel are being raised to understand that Yahweh, the God of Israel, chose Yahweh ben Yahweh before all the house of his father to be king over Israel forever. For Yahweh chose Judah to be the ruler. And of the house of Judah, the house of Yahweh, and among the sons of Yahweh, he liked Yahweh ben Yahweh to make him king over all Israel as referenced in 1 Chronicle chapter 28, verse 4. It was prophesied that Judah, the so-called black man of America, would be carried away captive. All of it would be wholly carried away captive. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 19. Judah is described as black unto the ground in Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah was taken into captivity because of affliction, ruin, torment, and suffering, and even more, because of great servitude. Today, Judah is dwelling among the heathen, Gentiles, secularists, idolaters, those who oppose Yahweh ben Yahweh. And no matter where Judah is, we can find no rest. Why? Because all of our persecutors and oppressors have overtaken us, as written in Lamentations chapter 1, verse 3. 
remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. Yahweh bin Yahweh is fulfilling prophecy. For it was prophesied that Yahweh bin Yahweh would come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Judah. We, the so-called black man of America, are Judah, and Yahweh bin Yahweh has come from among us. It was also prophesied that he would be the stone that the builders would reject. As prophesied Yahweh bin Yahweh, has indeed been persecuted by the builders of this civilization, thereby offering clear proof that Yahweh ben Yahweh is the Messiah. Yahweh ben Yahweh is the son of Almighty Yahweh, and he has been chosen to be the king over all Israel forever. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiase Brazonka, Kiva Shemayim Kain Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Kati Enu. Kimosha Soul King, Gamanaknu, La Koteom Lanu, Veal Tefie Nu, Lade Nisayom, Kim Kal Seinu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh bin Yahweh, love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, Ask about the special discount on Yahweh bin Yahweh, the Lamb of Yahweh. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh bin Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.